I strongly, strongly believe that people are underestimating the power of dollar cost averaging. It sounds like a super boring strategy, right? You buy an asset a little bit every month, that you keep this running for a medium long time, let's say five years, and then you've got some money afterwards because you bought low, you bought high, you bought average prices. It sounds super boring. It sounds like you get the average return only. Why really bother, right? Why not try to properly learn trading, buy low, sell high, be way more engaged? Why even do dollar cost averaging? Dollar cost averaging is super, super strong. If you buy an asset that has a high long-term expected return and you buy an asset that you believe will still be around in five to 10 years. So you can't do dollar cost averaging with like your next hyped meme coin and you can't do dollar cost averaging with an asset that doesn't really return much because it's not really worth it. You have to do this in a highly volatile asset that has high expected return that you still believe will be around in five to 10 years. And Bitcoin works pretty good for this, right? Bitcoin is that asset that's super, super volatile and that will be around in five to 10 years. So dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin makes a lot of sense. Now, why do I say that most people think dollar cost averaging isn't that strong of a force when in fact it's a massive force? Let's take a five-year time horizon, right? And let's say you already earn well, right? So we talked about this several times on this channel, the steps of wealth building, right? You first need to get your income up. Let's say you are at roughly net income, 10,000 US dollars per month, right? So you're like in the top, what is it? 20% or so of earners, right? 20 to 30% of earners. You make 10,000 US dollars per month net after taxes. And you decide to dollar cost average with 20% of that. So you still have 80% for spending, but 20% you save for dollar cost averaging because you want to build some wealth, right? You want to exit this red race. You want to feel somewhat safer. You take 2,000 US dollars per month that you dollar cost average into, say, Bitcoin. And you do this for five years. That's not like 20 years time horizon, right? And it's not like dollar cost averaging with $5,000. It's relatively doable for the high achievers that want to get somewhere. $2,000 per month for five years. Where are you then after five years with those $2,000? The answer is when you've got an expected return of Bitcoin of 15%, so one five, 15% real return on Bitcoin, which I believe is relatively realistic. If you take that, you've got roughly a quarter of a million dollars after five years. After five years, you've got a quarter of a million. And this, of course, compounds, right? The next five years, when you continue to do this, when you maybe got even a bit of a raise, right? you're then starting to maybe dollar cost average with $3,000. You continue to keep investing that money. You maybe diversify a little bit more, not just having Bitcoin, but also having stocks and maybe long-term bonds and maybe gold and maybe a down payment on a house. You diversify a bit after a while. But still, after five years, you've got a quarter of a million Maybe if you do it right after the next five years, you're already a millionaire. It takes 10 years to become a millionaire, but really how much effort did you put in this? You put 20% of your income, of your relatively high income, but still just 20%. And after 10 years, you are in terms of purchasing power, right? We are talking about real returns, not about um, nominal returns, right? In terms of purchasing power, you're a millionaire after 10 years. And after five years, you already feel pretty comfortable. So actually, subjectively, right, it doesn't really feel that different to have 250K versus 1 million. You can pay the bills quite nicely. You can also afford a little bit of lifestyle inflation, but you still don't have enough money to retire. So that 1 million will not let you retire. The 250K will not let you retire. So it's relatively similar in terms of how you feel about your wealth. If you are above, say, 20 to 25 years of expenses that you have saved up in wealth, then you're financially free, then that's another level. But if you have, say, two years, three years of expenses saved up, then yeah, you simply just feel safe and you can inflate your life a bit, your lifestyle a bit, but it's not really that different. So it's actually quite funny how there is maybe this psychological level of hitting a million, but in the end, once you hit it, it's really not that different to, to having 200K. But having 200K or 250K is very, very different to just having say $10,000 or $5,000.
because with those 250k you suddenly don't feel that worried about anymore about say switching jobs right being out of the job market for a month or two doesn't worry you and um, paying the bills doesn't worry you paying the deposit for say um, for a house or paying the deposit for say getting your kids into school when some private schools need that kind of deposit all these kind of large expenses they don't really worry you that much anymore buying a car doesn't really worry you that much anymore it's kind of like buying a phone almost right when you buy a phone you're not really thinking about the expenses is it four hundred dollars is it six hundred dollars doesn't really matter for cars it almost becomes the same you don't finance cars anymore you buy them outright you might still buy them used right maybe a three four year old car but even if you damage your car and you have to repair it, it doesn't really matter that much once you are at the quarter of a million mark. But it's really worth it, right? These five years of sacrifice are really worth it for this peace of mind. This needs to go to one million or March buyers now will make millions. This is how you get the clicks on YouTube, but this is not how you beat the markets. To beat the market in crypto, you need to be better informed than the rest. You need to be better skilled than the rest. You need to do better blockchain analytics. You need to track other people's wallets and know what is the smart money doing. It's the boring educational content that forms skill that doesn't perform so well on YouTube though. That's why I created the premium membership. Feel free to check it out. We are tracking influencer wallets to find out what they are buying before promoting this on YouTube. We've got a lot of tutorials to help with on-chain analytics, to help with wallet discovery. And of course, there are also plenty of chats where we help each other and also one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. So I'm messaging every premium member one-on-one -on -one directly. Once you're joining, you will get a message from me and you have the opportunity to directly pick my brain. Feel free to check it out. TheBitcoinTrader.com link is down below. And you don't need to hit the lottery for this, right? And you don't need to be super, super stingy. You don't need to save 50, 60% of your income. You simply just need to get your income to a certain level by skilling up, by learning a technical skill most people don't have, and by having that skill and monetize it properly, potentially even in a scalable manner. Monetize your rare skill properly, get to the 10K per month, and then save a bit of that. Do this for a somewhat overseeable time frame. Five years is not crazy long it's not nothing but five years can be achieved and once you're there you feel like you're at a very different level financially speaking to be formed and it doesn't take that much it takes buying in regularly into a high risk asset that outperforms monetary expansion and i believe especially bitcoin is very very good for this at the beginning because when you don't yet have two years of income saved up if you only have say three four five years of income saved up then even a drop of 30-40% in the price will not bother you too much because of two reasons. First of all, you can very quickly make this back, right? You're losing one or two months uh, saved up. That's not too bad, right? If you've got 10 years uh, saved up in wealth, then that drop is bad, so you need to diversify. But when you're just starting out, it doesn't really matter that much that you've got a bit more volatility in your wealth. So that's good. So that's why Bitcoin is good because you can buy dips very, very aggressively, and the dips don't matter to you psychologically. Secondly, what's nice about dollar cost averaging is since you already have the time horizon of five years and you're not really considering to sell your Bitcoin with the next hype, since you already want to buy over the long term, when the price goes down, you can tell yourself the good story that you can now buy more Bitcoin for less, right? You can now finally buy the bottom and this is what it was all about right you want a dollar cost average in order to also get these low prices so when it actually crashes you tell yourself finally we are there finally can i can buy a lot of bitcoin for very little money but when it goes up instead right if it doesn't crash if it goes up instead you can also tell yourself a good story because you made money right so you're either making money or you're getting good entry prices so both stories are great no matter where it goes it's psychologically a super easy game Buying in, dollar cost averaging in is a relatively easy game. It does become harder as your wealth grows. You have to diversify across different asset classes, not just have the risk on stuff. Once you are at, say, the 250k mark, right, you don't want to necessarily lose 100k in wealth because Bitcoin crashes. So once you're there, after five years of dollar cost averaging, you have to also buy long-term stocks. You have to maybe buy a house, right, do a down payment on a house. You have to diversify, buy some stocks, um, reduce your overall portfolio volatility. That's uh, 
at least a bit better psychologically speaking. It's also somewhat okay for risk adjusted returns. And overall, you feel way less stressed out about life, right? If you're still employed, you do this all within the context of an employment. And if your boss tells you something you don't like, or if your boss tells you, can you do this assignment on a Friday night so that I have this on Monday morning and you're pushed to work over the weekend, you can actually afford to push back because what can your boss really do? He has to go through all of the struggle to replace you. And if you've got very unique skills that are very hard to replace, then there's actually now a power dynamic that balances each other out. And if you've got also the savings in the background, you actually feel like you can replace that job anytime. If you have bills to pay and you only have one or two months saved up and you're risking into falling into credit card debt if you lose that job, then you have to say yes and amen to like every little word that your boss is saying. But if you've got something saved up and if you've got a skill that's in high demand um, that you have pretty much uniquely acquired yourself, then your life becomes way less stressful. The same kind of requests, the same kind of demands will not get that close to you anymore. You finally have some kind of negotiation balance. And that's, I believe, a very good thing, right? This is where the real wealth comes in. It's not just being able to pay the bills. It's actually being able to have peace of mind around financial situations. And that's why I believe doing that, right? Simply just dollar cost averaging in 20% for five years and having that quarter of a million after those five years. That's why it's so valuable. It's not valuable because you can retire on this. It's not valuable because you can pay the bill, but it's valuable because you feel way more safe in your situation and you can actually push back when it's needed. You actually finally feel a bit of a taste of some power in relationships when it comes especially to business relationships. So don't underestimate the power of dollar cost averaging. It sounds boring. It sounds like you only get the average return. But if you pick the right asset to dollar cost average in and you do this with an amount that somewhat matters, it does have an effect in a relatively short period of time. Not in a few months, but in a few years. It doesn't take decades. If it's your first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish this regularly. Like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. Feel free to also join our Telegram channel. There's a Telegram channel, a link down below. Looking very much forward to seeing you. Looking very much forward to chatting with you in Telegram. Cheers.